Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a binary logistic regression in SPSS. In this example, I'll be using two dichotomous predictor variables. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, you can see I have four variables. One's an ID. I have 100 records in this data set. I have an independent variable or predictor variable, gender, an independent variable, referral, and a dependent variable, outcome. And notice that all of these are nominal and more precisely they're all dichotomous. So if I click A1 up here you can see that it's all zeros and ones. So each variable is dichotomous. You have male and female, voluntary and involuntary, and unsuccessful and successful. So let's assume these data were collected from a program designed to treat substance use. And all the participants that go through the program fall into two categories, successful or unsuccessful. So either an individual is able to discontinue using substances, in which case we have successful, or they were unable to discontinue use, and in that case we have unsuccessful. All the outcomes can be placed in either the successful or unsuccessful levels of the variable outcome. So these data and the research question that we are asking are ideally set up for a binary logistic regression. In a binary logistic regression, you have one dependent variable and it has to be dichotomous. And that's what we have in this case, outcome as successful or unsuccessful. And then you could have multiple predictor variables. And those predictor variables can be nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. In this case, I have two predictor variables, two independent variables, and they are both nominal and, more precisely, dichotomous. If you had more than two levels for your independent variables, that could still work. And if you had interval or ratio level data, which SPSS refers to as scale, that would work, and ordinal would work as well. So what a logistic regression does is it gives you the probability that a certain combination of independent variables will have a particular outcome. And as you can see in this example, there are four possible combinations. You have female, and it's an involuntary referral, male with an involuntary referral, a female with a voluntary referral to counseling services, and a male with a voluntary referral to the counseling services. Because of the nature of the output of logistic regression, I find it useful to run a chi-square first, just to get an idea of what you may expect to find in the logistic regression results. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross Tabs. For rows, I'm going to put the independent variables or predictor variables. So it's going to be gender and referral. And then for column, I'm going to put outcome. Under statistics, I'm going to check off chi-square. Press continue. And then under cells, observed counts are checked off by default. I'm going to add expected and percentages for row, column, and total. And click continue and then click OK. So first we have the cross tab gender times outcome. And as you can see if we look at male and female looking at the numbers for the male participants you have 34 successful in the substance use treatment counseling program and 31 unsuccessful. For the female participants 29 successful and six unsuccessful. So before we even get to interpreting the results of logistic regression, we know that the probability of a male being unsuccessful in this treatment program is going to be higher than the probability of a female being unsuccessful. And similarly, we want to take a look at the cross tab 
table for referral times outcome. And we can see we have the voluntary and then the involuntary. And again, we can see here looking at unsuccessful voluntary, there's 11, involuntary 26. So we know that there is a greater probability of observing an unsuccessful outcome with an involuntary referral than we would see with a voluntary referral. So now let's take a look at logistic regression. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Regression, and in this case it's going to be binary logistic. And that's because we have one dependent variable with two levels. And this is what the logistic regression dialog looks like by default for dependent. I'm going to move outcome over. And for covariates, it's going to be gender and referral. Notice they're referred to as covariates and not predictor variables. And when we put them in this covariate Swiss box, I want to click categorical up here and move them over to the categorical covariates list box. Notice the reference category is set to last. I'll click continue here. Under save, I'm going to, under predicted values, I'm going to click probabilities and group membership. And I'll interpret these values. They show up on the data editor and not in the output. I'll click continue. Under options, I'm going to add classification plots, the HL goodness of fit test, and the confidence interval for EXP B, which here is actually beta, so it's EXP beta. Click continue, and uh, there's no changes under style, so I'm going to click OK, and here we have the output for the binary logistic regression. We can see here that we have no missing cases. And taking a look at the dependent variable encoding, successful is coded to 0 and unsuccessful is coded to 1. Then for categorical variable codings, we can see we have the frequency and the parameter coding for each of the levels of the predictor variables. There are 54 voluntary records, 46 involuntary and 65 males and 35 females. Moving down the output, we do want to see a statistically significant result here, and we have that for variables in the equation. The R-square can be found in the model summary. We can see it's 27.3%. 27.3% of the variance in the dependent variable can be explained by the predictor variables. Moving down to the h &L test, we want this to be a non-statistically significant result, and we have that, 0.992 is greater than 0 0.05. And then we're going to move down to the variables in the equation. And as we're looking at this table, I want to take a look down a bit for predicted probability. And you can see here, predicted probability is of membership for unsuccessful. So keep that in mind membership for unsuccessful. So moving back to variables in the equation, we can see we have gender 1 and referral 1. So this would represent gender 1 represent male and referral 1 would represent voluntary. And you would find that in the data editor or in the variable view. So you can see here for male and voluntary, if I click A1, see that male is zero and voluntary is zero as well. So moving back to the output, here for the p-value, we wanna make sure we have a statistically significant result for the predictor variables that we are going to interpret so we have a statistically significant finding here, 0 0.008 is less than 0 0.05 for gender, and of course 0 0.001 is less than 0 0.05 for referral. So we have statistically significant result for each of the predictor variables. And the value that we're going to interpret here is going to be this EXP beta. And remembering here that we have the predicted probability 
is of membership for unsuccessful. So again, keeping that in mind as we begin this interpretation of EXP beta, the way we interpret this is we have gender male, and in this case for a participant in that category, the participant is going to be 4.251 times more likely to be unsuccessful than a female. And notice here we're also provided the 95% confidence interval for EXP beta, the lower bound 1.468 and the upper bound 12.308. Then moving to referral, remember this is going to be voluntary, and notice the value for EXP beta is less than 1, it's 0 0.202. So the way we would interpret this is to say that a participant in the voluntary referral group is less likely to be unsuccessful than an individual in the involuntary referral group. Now if you prefer to interpret this the other way, to, in, to interpret involuntary compared to voluntary, instead of the voluntary value being here, just go to a calculator and we're going to take 1 and divide it by the EXP beta value here, 0 0.202. And you can see that's 4.95. So let's just call that 5. So that tells us that if somebody's in the involuntary category, they're five times more likely to be unsuccessful than if they're in the voluntary category. And again, as I mentioned, because of the way the output is configured, it's a good idea in, I believe, most cases to run those chi-square tests so that you have an idea about the probabilities of group membership before beginning to interpret this table. So taking a look at the data editor, for the last part here, we'll take a look at the two extra variables that I saved the predicted probability and the predicted group. And because we have four combinations of gender and referral, two dichotomous variables, we're going to get four percents in this predicted probability variable. You see the first one is about 32 percent. So this is a 32 percent probability of being unsuccessful and that's female and involuntary together. Those two levels of these two independent variables combined gives you a 32% chance of being unsuccessful. And because that's less than 50, the predicted group is going to be successful. So this is the prediction that SPSS is making, that the logistic regression is making, based on this combination. So a female who is involuntarily referred is predicted to be successful. A male in the involuntary category has a 66% chance of being unsuccessful, so the predicted group is unsuccessful. A female that was voluntarily referred has just a 0 0.09 value here, so that's 9%, just a 9% chance of being categorized as unsuccessful, so again the predicted group successful, and for the last combination male and voluntary, about a 28% chance, 0.284, 28% chance of being unsuccessful, so this combination is predicted to be successful. I hope you found this video in conducting a binary logistic regression SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.